Regional Economic Integration Outlook for the European Union Economic integration is clearly a big part of the global buzz on trade. More countries are forging trade agreements, and talks of further integrating economies at the regional level are happening in Asia, Latin America, Africa, and the Gulf. Today, some 400 regional trade agreements are in various stages of development, and many nations belong to more than one. One area that has known the most developed form of economic integration is the European Union, known as the EU. In this video, we'll take a closer look at how the EU evolved and the introduction in 1999 of a single currency, the Euro, which created the leading monetary union in the world today. We'll address the challenges facing the EU and assess its future. Let's review how the EU came about. Europe was economically and physically devastated at the end of World War II, with much of its industry and infrastructure destroyed. At the onset of the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union, the continent was also physically and politically divided between Western and Eastern Europe. To help address these issues and promote peace and harmony in Europe, six Western European countries, Belgium, France, Italy, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, and West Germany, formed an alliance in 1957 called the European Economic Community, EEC. Its successor is today's European Union, EU, which was established in 1992 and now includes 27 countries from both Eastern and Western Europe, with a total of 23 official languages among them. It's important to remember that the EU does not consist of the same countries as the continent of Europe. The EU is the world's most advanced and largest regional economic bloc with a half billion people and about $16 trillion in annual GDP. A regional economic bloc, or economic bloc, is an alliance of two or more countries that agree to eliminate tariffs and other restrictions to the cross-border flow of products, services, capital, and occasionally labor. Trade and investment within Europe have become much easier since the 1950s. Today, member states allow investors from other member countries to freely establish and conduct business and transfer capital. Gradual elimination of bureaucracy at Europe's national borders cut delivery times and reduced transportation costs. The EU eliminated the need to use most customs clearance documents. Sixteen EU countries have adopted the euro as their common currency, helping to lower business transaction costs and increase the transparency of pricing throughout continental Europe. Since its launch, the euro has become the world's second largest reserve currency, behind the U.S. dollar. The EU is home to the headquarters of some of the world's most important firms. Alliance, an insurance company founded in Germany, offers a range of insurance products and services, including variety of life, health, and casualty insurance. While previously its management viewed Europe as a collection of disparate countries, Alliance treats Europe increasingly as one large marketplace. In strategy making, management emphasizes a pan-European strategy an approach that cuts costs and increases the efficiency of Alliance's operations throughout Europe. Development of the EU has allowed Alliance to internationalize faster than other insurers. The firm is present in all the new EU countries, such as Poland, Hungary, and the Czech Republic, which are proving to be among Alliance's most profitable markets. In 2006, Alliance changed its legal status from a German company to a Societas Europea, a European company based in and regulated by the EU as a whole. Such a status allows firms to operate seamlessly across all 27 EU countries. The EU is at a crossroads today. Member countries are seeking to develop a European constitution to clarify distribution of powers and legitimize the EU's federal authority in much the same way the US Constitution does for the United States. However, getting agreement and support from the electorates in 27 countries is proving to be a challenging task. The global recession and financial crisis that began in 2008 worsened an already fragile EU economy. While each member country fared differently, the problems in Greece and Spain brought attention to the weaknesses of the Union. In 2010, the EU sought to rescue member countries fiscally weakened during the global crisis. Greece's economy faced collapse due to massive government debt, Many observers talk of the continent facing a Bermuda Triangle of debt, demographic decline, and lower growth. The EU faced an acute crisis in its economic core, the 16 countries that use the single currency. Markets lost faith that the Eurozone's economies, weaker or stronger, will one day converge thanks to the discipline of sharing a single currency. 
As a result, some countries are dissatisfied with the EU and oppose entry of additional countries. In support of the EU and the Eurozone's dominant powers of Germany and France, both continue to support the existence of the Euro but disagree on the policies needed to fix it. Despite these challenges, the EU remains the world's largest trading bloc. An open, flexible, competitive EU offers Europeans the best chance of thriving in a globalized world economy. Economic blocks have become a fixture of the emerging landscape of international trade and investment. More advanced economic blocks, such as the EU, permit the free flow of capital, labor, and technology among their member countries. The EU is also harmonizing monetary policy to manage the money supply and currency values, and fiscal policy to manage government finances, especially tax revenues, and gradually integrating the economies of its member nations. The challenges facing the EU today may be typical of those likely to be faced by economic blocs in the most advanced stages of development. Despite these challenges, such alliances represent a long-term trend and likely represent a stepping stone to the emergence of worldwide free trade.